In my last video, I claimed that these heat lamps were three times more effective than their LED counterparts at producing light that plants can use. And two people doubted me, so I made an entire video about it. Now now, I know what you're thinking. Three times more cost effective, you made that up. But hold your horses. This is YouTube. We put a layer of math between the claim and the bullshit. I should also mention, I'm going to be using an online calculator because verifying numbers is tedious, and I don't hate myself. Here's all the math for the people who care enough to pause. When researching something or answering a question, you have to be able to trust your sources of information. They have to come from reputable sources or things that were peer-reviewed, not a random website you found on Google. Which is why I'm going to be creating my own model for how light is emitted and absorbed by plants from a black body source of radiation. When creating a mathematical model of something, it's easiest to start simple. For example, the lamp emits light and the plant absorbs it. From there, you can go a little more in depth. Let's start by looking at the lamp. We're gonna need a model for the lamp. So we'll take the most simple model out there that there is, a black body radiator, which also happens to be exactly what an incandescent lamp is. It's a really hot piece of something emitting light. Next, you can go more in depth with the leaf. At the leaf, some of the light reflects off of it, some of it goes through it, and some of it is absorbed. Now, figuring out the proportions for all those things inside the leaf is quite complicated. So I took a model called Prospect Pro. Apparently, it's a very commonly used model when actual researchers are trying to model leaves. And there we go, we've got our model. We're all done, all we gotta do is program it. Easy peasy. Right? 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 Let's see a test run. Why is verifying a model so hard? Well, it's because the universe is gaslighting you. You see, I didn't have a point of reference in my model. I never actually knew if my number was right. I only knew that it was wrong. In the end, I couldn't find anything wrong with the program, and it was close enough to the LED's output that I just called it a day. I also did happen to run the program the way I thought the random website would have run it, and I got the same number as the website. It turns out that the website took the tiny part of the light curve that the plant actually uses and then squished all 250 watts right into there. In other words, it was a really bad estimation. Anyways, I got 64.42 micromoles per second. Anyways, here's the results. Oh, yeah, I missed them. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you had a fun time watching it. I shared a fun time making it, except for the part where I proved myself 16 times wrong. If you'd like to see more, let me know.